Many of you may not have heard of Digimon, and there's surely some of you who have. Most people that have heard of Digimon know it as a rip-off version of Pokemon. Real fans of the franchise know the statement is far from the truth. The Digimon anime released in 1999 was unique for its time, and in this video I will provide a high level overview and breakdown of the first series. As always, timestamps have been included in the description box below, so without further ado, let's get into it. Firstly, a little background as to how Digimon came to be. Digimon was created by Wiz and Bandai in 1997, intended to be a masculine counterpart to the already popular Tamagotchi pets, which was more orientated towards the female gender. I'm going to gloss over a bunch of history so we can get to the contents of this video. From 1999 onwards, Toei Animation started to produce multiple anime series for the franchise. They called the first series Digimon Adventure. I remember watching the first episode when I was only little. The series absolutely fascinated me. It learnt a lot from the anime that came before it. For example, similar to Pokemon, the Digimon had the ability to evolve, officially called Digivolution. But what was unique for this series at the time was that Digimon were able to revert back to their base form. In my opinion, the franchise improved the concept of evolution set by the Pokemon universe. Unlike Pokemon, Digimon did not have the constraints to evolve just three times, but are able to evolve multiple times over. Remember, Adventure came out in the late 90s, and by that point we only had the Indigo series for Pokemon which had aired at the time, which was long before Mega Evolutions and Gigantamaxing were a thing. However, the Digimon were not able to digivolve infinitely. There is an upper limit to the level they can reach. The Digivolution ranks are as follows. Baby, In Training, Rookie, Champion, Ultimate and Mega. There are clear differences in strengths between the various types, which lends them to being better effective in battle versus particular types of Digimon. Take Anjumon for example, champion level of Patamon. Anjumon was able to single handedly take out Devimon, the first major antagonist of the series, who was able to absolutely wreck an entire team of champion level Digimon. Anjumon was able to defeat Devimon single handedly as it was weak to his attributes. Being a light vaccine type which is strong against a dark virus type like Devimon. It's similar to how in Pokemon fire types are weak to water types. So even though the level might be a little bit lower, just based on that type advantage alone, it can be enough to secure the win. So by this point I'm sure you get the gist of it now. Now I'm ashamed to say that even though I continue to stubbornly dig my heels in and reject the notion that Digimon is a ripoff of Pokemon, I can't lie sometimes the similarities between the two franchises are just uncanny. Later on in the movie for the series we are introduced to DNA Digivolution, in which Digimon are able to combine together. Similar to Fusion in Dragon Ball, in this case the Digimon must be of the same level in order to meet the criteria to DNA Digivolve. In other words a champion can only DNA Digivolve with a champion and so forth. What's neat about DNA Digivolution is that it allows Digimon to combine and jump into the next Digivolution level. If you recall that ceiling I mentioned earlier about the Mega level being the cap, so when two mega level Digimon DNA Digivolve, they do remain at the mega level, but become exponentially more powerful. Just as Pokemon did as the years went on, and we got more Digimon series, they iterated on the Digivolution system, but generally, the core tenets to it, set by the first series, remain unchanged. Okay, now we'll move on to the characters of the first series. The characters and the story are where the series diverges quite significantly from its counterparts. There's Tai. Tai is a soccer fanatic a naturally born leader, who has all the traits you would come to expect from a leader. He's brave, caring and loyal, but he's not without his flaws. Tai can be very compulsive and be hard headed at times. The writers do do a good job in having the other characters in the show balance him out, as they come to rely on him and he them. Tai also has a little sister by the name of Kari, who we are introduced to in the series at the midpoint. More on her later, Tai's partner is Ogumon. Then there's Matt. Matt is the polar opposite of Tai, a total loner, often keeping to himself where possible. He enjoys playing his harmonica during his downtime. As you would come to expect due to their personality differences, Matt and Tai often clash. Their relationship is not always fractious, as there's a clear sense of deep respect that grows between these two. Matt has a little brother by the name of TK, who we meet along with the rest of the gang in episode 1. We find out throughout the series that the brothers do not live together as their parents had divorced, leading to the brothers having to split up. 
Matt went on to live with their father whilst TK lived with their mother. The brothers rarely would see each other until that is they reunited at summer camp where we meet the entire gang. Matt undergoes his own personal journey of growth where he must deal with his fear of abandonment and insecurities and his ability to take care of those he loves. Matt's Digimon partner is Gobumon. On to Sora. Sora is one of the group's two initial female companions. Sora and Tai are classmates as well as close friends. They often play soccer together. Sora has the same affinity as Tai when it comes to soccer. Hell, she might even be better at it than he is. Sora plays a maternal figure within the group's dynamic. She's selfless by nature and will, to her own detriment, put herself in harm's way if one of the group members are in trouble. We find out her relationship with her mother is quite cold and distant. You see, Sora is a bit of a tomboy. Her dress sense is more masculine than most girls her age and she tends to enjoy activities that boys more stereotypically would lean towards. Top of that, her only real friend seems to be Tai. Sora's mother on the other hand is a very traditional Japanese woman, whom follows the societal culture and norms expected upon a woman on that side of the country during that time. This causes a rift between the two. The mother has no idea in how to interact with her, which leads to Sora to question whether her mother even loves her at all. This relationship is a key part of Sora's character arc, among some other issues she must overcome throughout her journey. Sora's Digimon partner is Biomon. Then we have Izzy. Izzy is the brains of the group. He carries with him his trusty and shockingly high tech for its time laptop. He loves computers, but his obsession with them was inspired as a way for him to suppress a feeling of deep sadness he carries. Izzy is often the first to naturally start uncovering the mysteries of the digital world and is an essential figure throughout the journey in helping the group progress and navigate this world. His quick thinking helps everybody get out of jams on several occasions. Izzy's Digimon partner is Tentamon. This is Joel. Joel is the eldest of the group, a clinical stressor. The slightest thing can send Joel into a panicked frenzy. A student struggling with his studies, having constant pressure on his shoulders to do well in school. Pressure I might add which is all self-inflicted. His exams on his mind 24-7 something he continues to worry about even in the digital world. In Joel's defense, he makes up for this in his strong sense of responsibility. When he is able to keep his wits about him, Joel plays an integral part of the team. His Digimon partner is Gomomo. Next we have Mimi. Mimi is often aloof of all things but shopping and fashion. She comes from a privileged background, but unlike many kids born into wealth, Mimi maintains a sense of sincerity in the way she treats others, even Digimon. Her Digimon partner is Palmon. And finally, we have TK. As mentioned, TK is Matt's little brother. He's the baby of the group, the youngest by a fair margin. He often finds himself suffocated by his older brother, who is always concerned about his safety. We see TK grow throughout the series in which he gains a sense of independence and the ability to be able to fend for himself. His Digimon partner is Patamon. From here on out, I'm going to be covering the entire series. So by the odd chance you happen to be enticed to watch the show, then this is where I bid you farewell. Once you're up to date, just make sure to come back and finish off this video, but more importantly, come join the discussion in the comments section below. Also, if you happen to be enjoying this video, please consider supporting the channel by dropping a like and subscribing. Okay, moving on. We start the first episode where the group is at summer camp. Ty comments on how the global weather has been in disarray as of late. To everybody's surprise, it suddenly starts to snow which soon transitions into a full-blown blizzard. An aurora appears in the sky, which shoots a beam of light towards the kids. This light contains small electronic gadgets, known as digivices. The kids interact with the digivices, which leads them to being sucked into a portal. They soon find themselves awake in an unfamiliar land, having been transported into the digital world. We first see Tai being woken up by a pink blob of a creature called Koromon. Haruman is ecstatic to meet Tai and goes on to tell him how it's been waiting for him for a long time, much to Tai's confusion. Tai sees in the distance what appears to be a large red flying soul stag beetle. Soon the rest of the group meet up, having already been acquainted with their partner Digimon. Joel's partner Bukumon explains what they are. The large flying beetle in the sky is called Quagamon, which spends the entire episode harassing and attacking the gang. Quagamon soon has them cornered at the edge of a cliff. That is, until the Digimon are able to digivolve into their rookie forms. You see, the Digivices have a few uses throughout the series, but their principal function is that they allow the partner Digimon the ability to digivolve. The collective force of the kid's rookie Digimon is not enough to hold back Quagamon, a champion level Digimon, so they all wind up falling off the edge of the cliff. I wanted to spend some time going through the first episode, as it will give you a feel as to what the show's like. Don't get me wrong, it is a kid's show, 
but the story gets pretty dark which is a treat for more mature viewers that are into darker themes. Okay I'm going to be jumping forward a fair bit whilst covering key moments that happen. The gang survive the fall and land into a high current river. Gomamon comes in clutch with some quick thinking and calls upon his fish bodies which help the gang back to shore. Over the course of the next few episodes the group come face to face with many more adversaries. Digimon that seem to have become unhinged. Each of the partner Digimon are able to reach their champion level barring TK's partner Patamon. The kids and their partners are able to defeat the enemy Digimon, some in which require teamwork to take down. Ultimately upon defeat those Digimon are brought back to sanity. We see Black Gears leaving their bodies as they soon return to normal. Devimon the main villain of this arc, who governs the area the kids are stranded on known as File Island, is the culprit behind all this. Devimon creates the gears out of its own dark energy, which it uses in order to control Digimon to do its bidding. The more gears Devimon ensnares within his subjects, the more powerful they become. It is soon shown that Devimon is deliberately targeting the kids, as he has insights into a prophecy, a prophecy which informs it that these kids, known as the Digidestined, will be the cause of his demise. Eventually they all manage to make their way up to File Island, and even with all their combined might, they are still unable to take down Devimon. If you remember a while back in this video, I actually spoiled this next part. It was none other than Anjumon that is able to defeat Devimon. Anjumon is the champion level form of Patamon, who is able to digivolve, triggered by TK's drive to save his friends in their moment of peril, finally stepping up in order to protect others, as they have done so for him on numerous occasions. Unfortunately, it takes Anjumon's entire life force to defeat Devimon, and so he perishes along with his foe. But not until Devimon is able to get the last laugh, as it goes on to mock the Digidestined and Anjumon on how they are much more powerful evil Digimon they are yet to face, all far superior than it, going on to further highlight their predicament in that it took Anjumon to sacrifice itself to defeat it. Anjumon reverts back to a Digi-Egg. Digimon are just data after all, and so when they die they generally turn back into Digi-Eggs. The reason that Devimon does not is because it was a virus, as in the literal sense of the word, meaning it was never meant to be a part of the digital world's ecosystem in the first place. In the final segment of this video, this will all make more sense. The team are all then greeted by a hologram of an old man whose name is Jedi. Jedi advises them to head towards the server continent. He appears on a reoccurring basis throughout the rest of the series, providing the kids key insights, tools and knowledge, whilst they slowly uncover his role in their story. In the next arc, our Digidestin must face off against Etamon. Now don't let his small stature and satirical looks fool you, Etamon is a menace. I would argue its most powerful weapon is its ability to do a horrible Elvis Presley impression. Jokes aside, Etamon's power is unique as it draws its power directly from the Digital World server network which it is directly connected to. As Digimon are, the Digital World is also just made up of data, so think of the server network as the information flow of the Digital World, containing a tremendous amount of data in the form of bits, which is the makeup of every digital being in the Digital World. Etamon is an ultimate level Digimon, far too powerful for their mere champion level Digimon, and so the kids must flee from battle. Not too long after, Ty finds a crest with a symbol on it, in which is representative of the sun. They must now find ways for their partners to reach the next Digivolution level, Jedi reappears again during this arc and provides Izzy's laptop with a digital analyzer, in which helps identify Digimon and their current level, similar to a Pokedex. They soon come to find out that the crest Ty found is actually what is needed for Greymon to reach the next level. Unfortunately, Ty pushes Greymon too far, not listening to reason as the rest of the group warn him he is out of line. His desire to digivolve Greymon soon turns into raw obsession, which does enable Greymon to digivolve but not yield the intended result. It digivolves into Skull Greymon, a corrupted ultimate level Digimon. Ty forcing Greymon to digivolve led to a dark Digivolution much to everybody's horror. Ty is talked down by the other kids and realises his mistake. In order for his crest to provide the desired result, a parameter must first be met. His crest is called the Crest of Courage and so the condition to be met is that his resolve comes from a place of pure courage, not from what it was in this case which was obsession caused by a pathological fear of failure due to their defeat by the hands of Etamon. The entire group of champion Digimon are unable to keep Skull Greymon at bay. The kids are forced to seek shelter, away from the havoc Skull Greymon is causing upon the surrounding area. Skull Greymon eventually runs out of energy and reverts back to an exhausted Coromon. One thing's for sure, Ty as well as the rest of the Digidestined learned a huge lesson in how their emotional state can impact the state of their Digimon. One by one the rest of the kids find their crests, but none are able to meet the conditions yet required for their crest to activate, with each having their own parameters which must be met first in order for the crest to work. 
Kai is the first to activate his crest. Being stuck in the midst of a battle between Etamon and its arch nemesis Datamon, another ultimate Digimon, Sora, having been captured by Datamon, is trapped between the two battling. Tai must choose to either fight or take flight. He musters up the courage to save his friend, and now the team find themselves face to face with a fully powered Etamon, who has now killed Datamon and merged itself with the server network. Tai is ready to do what it takes to protect his friends, and with absolute resolve walks courageously forward towards Etamon. His crest activates and Greymon is able to digivolve into Metal Greymon. But the shockwaves caused by the aftermath leads to time and space warping around them, resulting in Tai and Metal Greymon being swept away into the distortion. The episode ends with the group calling out for Tai who is nowhere to be found. Tai ends up in the real world with Coromon, whilst the rest of the kids are still being held up in the digital world. He does his best to get Coromon back to his apartment undetected. Kari meets Coromon, and much to his shock, Kari appears to have pre-existing knowledge of Coromon's existence, going on to highlight how this is not the same Coromon she recalls. A mystery which is later fully explained in the movie Our War Game, which takes place after the series ends. Tai is getting reacclimated to life back in the real world, with the friends he left behind at the forefront of his mind. Myotismon the King of the Undead is the next big bad. Unlike the former two villains, Myotismon marks a key transition point in the series, in which the conflict trickles into the real world and it has real world consequences. Soon after Etamon's defeat, Myotismon sends out his subordinate Demi Devimon, a cunning and conniving little rascal, to track down the kids and take them out. Myotismon, just as Devimon, is aware of a prophecy which prophesizes his demise, but at the hands of an eighth child. Jenai advises the kids of the prophecy that in fact there is an eighth child. In order to avert this destiny of his, Myotismon sends out his goons to find the eighth child and also kill the rest of the Digidestined. This eighth child is nowhere to be found in the digital world. Myotismon soon comes to learn from Wizard Mon that the eighth child resides in the real world, who is oh, later revealed I to be Kari, Tai's little really sister. This whole time, Myotismon has been keeping the Digimon, Salomon, under his control. Salomon soon digivolves into Gatomon, a champion level Digimon, which is the form it is in when we are introduced to it. Gatomon is directly tied to the prophecy, and so Myotismon makes sure to keep Gatomon at arm's length at all times. Gatomon turns out to be Kari's partner. Myotismon makes his way to the real world to find the eight child, with the rest of the Digidestin following him. This arc is much longer than the other two. As the kids must deal with the fallout caused by the legions of hostile Digimon Myotismon brought with him, that are wreaking havoc in the real world. The kids also start to remember many years ago in Heighton View Terrace where the kids live, there was a battle between a Greymon and a Parrotmon. All but the Digidestin saw this battle unfold, and so Izzy suspects the eighth child must have also witnessed this battle. This ties into how Kari knew about Koromon, and again to reiterate all of this is explained and expanded upon in the movie which I highly recommend you watch. In my opinion this arc is the best one in the series, as the kids must all deal with interpersonal issues such as Tai doing his best and yet failing to protect Kari whilst also conflicted in her joining the fight given how integral she is to defeating Myoismon. Then there's Sora, who is finally able to address the underlying issues between her and her mother, along with Matt and TK, whom respectively meet their mother and father again after a long time and must reconcile. Izzy's worst fears finally become a reality for him when his parents inform him the truth that he is in fact adopted. He always had a feeling of this from a very young age, it's why he became so obsessed with computers, becoming engrossed in computers as a coping mechanism due to his denial of this fact. Izzy comes to peace with this as he realises how much his parents love him and see him no different as they would if he was blood related. Izzy having now finally accepted and moving past the truth of his adoption. Joe and Mimi have their own individual arcs too. This all leads to a showdown between the Digidestin and Myotismon who proves to be too much for their ultimate level Digimon. Myotismon had Kari's crest all along, by this point Wizardmon was able to successfully retrieve Kari's crest, but what was left to retrieve was her Digivice. Wizardmon sacrifices itself in order to protect Kari and Gatomon from Myotismon's grizzly wing attack. Kari's grief in that moment makes a Digivice which is in the hands of Demi Devimon go haywire. The distraction allows for Tai to get a hold of her Digivice and throw it over to Kari. Kari's Digivice and Tag activate, enabling Gatomon to Digivolve into her ultimate form Andrew Woman. The next part plays out similar to the battle between Anjumon and Devimon. In this case, Anjumon is able to assimilate all the partner Digimon's energy into a single attack, making easy work of Myotismon. 
After a long arduous journey, the Digidestin takes solace in seemingly having been able to defeat Myotismon, but something feels amiss. Izzy then receives an email from Jenai which reads the following. The sky will be darkened by the wings of many bats. The fallen people will invoke the name of the undead Digimon King, and when the clock strikes the hour of the beast, the undead king will reveal himself in his true form as the beast. Then angels will shoot arrows of hope and light at the loved ones of those they have been sent to protect, and a miracle will happen. Just as the prophecy said, the clock does in fact strike the hour of the beast, which we then see Myotismon return having digivolved into Venom Myotismon, a mega level Digimon. Seemingly having lost all sense and reason, it truly has become a mindless beast as the prophecy devised. The kids are now completely out of their depth, realising that there's only one hope of winning, which is ensuring the prophecy is seen through, which states that the angels will shoot arrows of hope and light at the loved ones that they have been sent to protect. Izzy soon realises that this prophecy is referring to the Digimon of TK and Kari, who are the crest holders of hope and light. But there was one problem. The prophecy states that the arrows were to be shot at the loved ones of the crest holders, which they realised was referring to Matt and Tai. The group are concerned of the risk that this may pose to the two, but time was not on their side, and so Tai and Matt demanded that their younger siblings ordered their Digimon to launch their arrows at them. The moment the arrows made contact, Agumon and Gobumon immediately warped Digivolve into Wargreymon and Metagururumon. Having now reached their mega forms, Wargreymon and Metagururumon are successful in momentarily halting Venom Myotismon's rampage, but this only leads to the beast becoming more enraged, making it more powerful to the detriment of its sanity. The Mega Digimon are unable to withstand its assault, finding themselves pinned. The kids retain faith in their Digimon, which causes their crests to activate in unison, emerging from them lassos in which hold down the beast, allowing Wargreymon and Metagururumon to launch fatal blows finally eliminating Venom Myotismon. We will now be entering the final arc, but I wanted to take the time to thank you for still being here. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you are, you can let me know via the comment section below. And if you are interested in me covering any other Digimon series, please do let me know. Okay, now onto the final arc. Soon after defeating Myotismon, the digital world appears inverted in the sky. The kids are then called upon to the digital world as a huge calamity has befallen it. A beam of light appears to take the kids back, they all bid their parents farewell, promising to meet again. Due to the way time operates in the digital world, the kids realise much time has passed and significant changes have happened since they were there last. The Digidestin come to find that the digital world is now under the dominion of the Dark Masters, consisting of Metal Seedramon, Puppetmon, Metal Machine Dramon and Piedmon, their leader, all whom resigned in the newly formed Spiral Mountain. The partner Digimon stand no chance against the Dark Masters, with Piedmon making easy work out of Wargreymon and Metagururumon, going on to highlight how such newly attained mega forms lacking experience stand no chance against it. The group are saved by Piximon who warns them simply being together this time will not win them this battle, letting them know that they are now on their own. The kids must traverse around the digital world in order to find the means to defeat the Dark Masters and also uncover the mystery as to how the Dark Masters were able to come to power. A lot happens during this arc. Many of the kids must face and overcome their deepest fears and insecurities. Major rifts occur within the group, leading to the kids splitting up for a moment in time. Hari is also possessed by a host program of the digital world known as homeostasis which through Kari exposes that it was in fact Piedmon who many years ago stole the kids tags and crests only for Jenai to locate and retrieve them along with the digi eggs of the partner Digimon. Jenai is unable to keep a hold of Gatomon's digi egg and so this is how it ended up with my Otismon. Jenai is the one who set it up so that the kids were able to find their tags during the Etamon arc. The kids are able to eventually defeat the first three Dark Masters, culminating in them reaching Spiral Mountain and facing the most powerful and devious of the Dark Masters, Piedmon. The two Mega Digimon fare much better versus Piedmon this time around, having become more experienced and battle hardened over their final journey. They gain the upper hand. Problem is the clown still has some tricks up his sleeve, Piedmon is able to turn most of the Digidestined and their Digimon into keychains, leaving only Anjumon, TK and Kari as the last ones standing. TK goes on to further display the development he had from the culmination of their journey up to this point, doing his level best to remain stoic, as well as retain his composure in order to protect Kari and give her reassurance. Both TK and Kari are dropped from the sky by Piedmon. Anjumon's desperation to save the two, coupled that with TK's faith remaining strong, Anjumon is able to finally digivolve into its ultimate form, Magna Anjumon. 
Magna Anjuman, like his champion form, proves to be far stronger than his other ultimate counterparts, able to best Piedmont in a duel and goes on to restore everybody. Magna Anjuman unveils his ultimate move, the Gate of Destiny, which sucks in all evil. Piedmont and his minions are being swept away into the gate. Piedmont is able to hold his ground, that is until War Greymon and Metal Gururumon attack him, sending him soaring to his demise. Upon Piedmon's defeat, Spiral Mountain starts to disintegrate. Izzy receives comms from Jedi warning them that the Dark Masters are not the true enemy, that the true enemy is the one whom created the Dark Masters, Devimon, Etamon, and Myotismon. They are then pulled into an abyss of darkness, only to be momentarily stopped by Jedi, who explains that they are not the first to be destined, and their predecessors had been called upon to defeat a great evil. Now a similar evil has emerged which they must defeat. The great evil is revealed to be Apocalymon. Apocalymon was created by the pain and suffering endured by Digimon whom were unable to digivolve and as a result ended up disappearing. Apocalymon is depression personified. It lulls the Digidestined, whom are able to have their Digimon digivolve with little issue, whilst he must suffer as other Digimon without partners die trying to, leading to him having to endure the pain with them. The group are naturally outclassed as they are in Apocalymon's domain. Apocalymon destroys their crests and erases the kids along with their partner Digimon. Apocalymon rejoices in their defeat. The kids find themselves trapped in a binary prison, seemingly having lost hope, but their partner Digimon remind them how they've been able to overcome the impossible every time during their journey, and now is not any different. Their spirits having now been lifted, their bodies begin to glow with the symbol of their crests. Realising the power of the crests was within them all along, Kids are able to rematerialize and face Apocalymon one more time for a final showdown. They work together and are able to gain the upper hand, as the fear they once had which was powering Apocalymon was no more. Seeing his demise imminent, Apocalymon takes the nuclear option and looks to detonate his body and take the digital world down with him. The kids' digivices start to glow, which create a beam of light which boxes in Apocalymon, containing the explosion. Their journey has finally come to an end. The kids enjoy some downtime with their partners. Until that is, Jedi explains the digital gate will soon close and will not reopen, so they need to leave now or risk being trapped in the digital world forever. Each Digidestined and their partner spend some much needed one-to-one -one time with each other, reminiscing the journey they undertook together. The kids bid an emotional farewell to their partners, promising to meet again, as Ty is under the belief that the gate cannot stay closed forever. The next time we meet the gang together is in the movie, which is split into four segments. The first part tells the full story behind the battle the Digidestin witnessed between Greymon and Parrotmon in Heightened View Terrace many years ago that was mentioned during the My Autismon arc. We then transition to part two titled Our War Game. Initially, Ty and Izzy must find a way to stop a new evil force that is using the internet as a way to grow its power with the intent to destroy the real world. The film is awesome. The dialogue is so much better than the show. The artwork and animation is night and day from the series, far more mature and far more gritty. The stakes of the story are much higher as the enemy is targeting the real world using real world means like launching nuclear missiles. The concept of DNA digivolutions, which I mentioned earlier in this video, is first introduced in this movie. This new enemy is seemingly in search of something or somebody, which is explained in part 3, which provides backstory as to how this Digimon came to be. And then the final part, part 4, which focuses on the second generation of Digidestined, which tells what it was that the Digimon was searching for in our war game. This movie deserves its own separate video, so I won't be going into more detail in this one. If you would like me to do a video on this movie, let me know in the comment section below. Now I do acknowledge there are some valid reasons as to why the first series of Digimon gets flack. The animation is nothing to write home about, and there are numerous animation errors throughout the series. It just lacks that polish that left a bad impression for many. I will be first to say that some of the dialogue choices for the dub are absolutely cringe, but for me they don't happen often enough to spoil the show, as the voice acting in this series is so top notch it balances things out. I don't think it's fair to compare Digimon to franchises like Pokemon, because if this video by this point still has not shown how much they differ, then I don't think anything will change that for you. The time period Digimon had released was around the time Pokemon had taken over in global popularity and the art style and marketing of Digimon was targeted towards the same demographic audience as Pokemon which was a big mistake in my opinion. In my opinion Digimon's story is far too mature for small children that would follow franchises like Pokemon. 
The Digimon franchise does a great job in diverging away from this younger demographic as each preceding series gets much darker and even more mature in its storytelling. I acknowledge I have a bias towards the first series just due to nostalgia alone, which makes my opinion of it maybe higher than it should be. But honestly, the first series sets the roadmap for its successors. It does a lot right. And these series take clear learnings from the original and making further improvements as well as iterating on some of the concepts the first series introduced. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing and dropping a like as it will massively help the channel grow and allow for this video to reach more viewers interested in this sort of content. What are your thoughts on the first series as a whole? Are you a fan of it? Are you not? I'd like to hear your opinions on it in the comment section below. That's it for this one. This is Ray, signing off. Peace.